Hello, my name is Visti Larson. This is the first video of Deva Guru Brihaspati Center's channel. The uh, video that I'll be presenting today is on the topic of Nama Karana. That Im implies or means baby naming, how to name a person, how to name a child. In this, we'll be, I'll be detailing some methods that uh, until now have only been shared within a very few select people within traditions, across traditions, and are mostly known and are practiced only by few solid long traditions today. None of this which I teach is a real secret. It is practice and a, a practice by traditional practice, which is done by many astrologers today. However, given the methods that have been used today commonly by many astrologers to name people, name children, um, I thought it apt to give out this video to show exactly how our tradition uh, suggests to do such a topic or to perform such a topic. And uh, in this, I'll be presenting some slides and uh, I hope you like it. If you do, press the like button and uh, stay tuned for more videos on different topics. This is the first uh, video on the topic of Namakarna. There will be more videos, so stay tuned. Now. The slides I have for you today, or the presentation I have for you today, that you can now see on the screen here, is on the topic of Namakarana. And uh, the, uh, as you can see, uh, this is normally a topic we take up when it comes to newborns, when it comes to kids, children. And um, <clears throat> the uh, tradition uh, that uh, I come from, or which I am presenting today, is that of uh, the Achutananda tradition, Sri Achutananda Dasa from, uh, from Jagannath Puri. And um, uh, he is part of the Uriya tradition and uh, started the tradition under the guidance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, around the uh, 15th century. The uh, topic that I'm giving today is based on the teachings of my guru, the current living head of the tradition, um, Sanjira, and um, the topics we will be presenting are vast and many. Why is the topic of Namakarna so important? And why would I want to present a topic on this? Isn't there an easy way to, to name kids? Do we need to name kids uh, with specific names based on their chart? Let us see. The uh, topic of Namakarna is based on the idea that the name is the first mantra. The name is the first mantra, and therefore your name, the first name you are getting, is called Mantra Diksha, herein which we are interested in the name which is your personal name. In most countries, this is the first name. In some, this is the last name, where the family name comes first. In some cases, like, uh, like that of uh, Bibi Raman, Bangalore Venkata Raman, his name was based on the place he was born, Bangalore, where he was originating from, Venkata, who is his father's name, and Raman, which is his own personal name. So the personal name is the one we're interested in here. It is uh, such that uh, based on this idea that a chart uh, is going to have a governing impact on the name, that some people decide to give two names, one which is the name they wish to call the child, and some add a kundli name. And this kundli name they use for pujas and whatnot. Uh, however, most of them only register the personal name and they don't register the Kundli name, as a re result of which the Kundli name is actually not even applicable for the person's life. It does not have any effect. It does not have any impact on the person's life. The, uh, unfortunately, the well-selected Kundli name, if you call it the chart name, a, it goes into oblivion. It has no effect except when one does certain pujas. Some would argue that it becomes important to use the Kundalini name when you one is approaching God. But the name is like a mantra. You are reciting it all the time. Every time you say your own name, every time somebody calls upon you, it is like a mantra which you are reciting. That mantra is with you all the time, every day of your life. It gives you self-identity. So make sure that the name you've chosen is appropriate or has, which has been chosen for you in this case. And if not, then there is an option for one to change the name to get a better name. Now, uh, so it is the first mantra diksha, the name. Mm -hmm. 
This mantra diksha, this mantra which is your name, can ensure that your health is strong, can give you success in your life because it guides your mind. The name guides your mind to choose certain actions over others. It, it can ensure that you are, your undertakings and your desires are being supported. It can decide what you are going to get from the world because of that name or mantra which you are practicing. So just as we select a mantra based on many prerequisites, such as the matching with the chart, the matching with the name, the matching with the person's uh, uh, sadhana, so also the name should be chosen in a very select manner. Um, this name is, is the first and foremost important factor of a child's life. In India, some people would change the name of the person if they saw that the child in their, uh, in their, in their childhood, the infanthood, was suffering health-wise. They would question whether the name given was appropriate and therefore change it. Now, I would like to start off with speaking of one of the prime principles in naming. And that is, if possible, the name of the person's Ishta Devata should be chosen. Ishta Devata literally would mean the most auspicious form of God. Uh, that implying that whenever you, the, your name is being called, it, the same name would also be calling that form of God, which gives you the best of life. In the tradition of Achutananda, we prefer to give the name of the Ishta Devata and understand that Ishta Devata is the form of God which gives moksha, mukti, or nirvana, liberation from this life. That implying that whatever the person is seeking to do in this life, they will not be bonded, they will not come under bondage. Their life and karmas will not cause them to have to stay on this planet or be reborn anymore. That therefore, uh, we believe that the highest form of, uh, of auspiciousness, of, of goodness in life, is to no longer be under bondage. So therefore, in our tradition, we prefer to give the name of the Ishta Deva to, to the child. So therefore, before I speak any more on the topic of naming, it would be important for us to understand how to find the Ishta Devata in the chart. Um, now, this is not only a Vedic concept, or some people will call it a Hindu concept. It, it's not only so. It is a, a concept which is ascribed to any religion that there is one singular form of God, or even, let's say, a select name of God, which is more appropriate for you to be called by. And by being called that, you are actually calling that form of God, which continues to ensure you are being liberated from this planet. What better thing can there be than to be free? So, um, the methodology that, uh, that is ascribed in our tradition to find the Ishta Devata, in using this understanding of the one which gives us mukti, is by finding that which the Nadis call the Jivan Mukta Amsa. Jivan Mukta Amsha. Jivan means the, that, that living being, the li living form, which is the person themselves. Mukta, which refers to liberation. Amsha, Amsha means uh, it has to do with a divisional chart. There's this concept of Vargas in astrology and Vedic Jyotish rather. And now Vamsha is the Amsha that is referred to in this case. Now, the Ishta Devata is found from the planets in the 12th, from the Chara Atma Karaka in Navamsha. That's the long name of Jivan Mukta Amsha. Mm -hmm. So, the Chara Atma Karaka is the planet with highest degrees in the chart. Regardless of signs, ignore the signs and see which has higher degrees. It does not have higher longitude. The highest longitude would be the one which is closest to Pisces. We're not interested in that one. We take the signs individually, see which planet has highest degrees, and, and we check all the planets to see which has highest degrees in the sign that it is currently in. The one which has highest degrees is the Atma Karaka. We call it Chara Atma Karaka. Uh, to differentiate it from the sun, which is the natural Atma for everybody. So that particular planet which has highest degrees is the Chara Atma Karaka. For the nodes, because they travel in reverse, we consider their degrees in reverse. So they are strongest in the beginning of a sign and weakest in the end of the sign. So when you do try to ascertain its de their degrees, what you do is deduct the degree from 30, see the balance. That is its degree that you would compare it to the other planets. 
K2 is excluded in this because it'll have the same degrees as Rahul. Only one of them can be the dominant one. It will be Rahul, the cause of rebirth. Now, we see this planet in the Navamsha, and we see the 12th sign from that. Now, this is a, one uh, Navamsha of our Guru, Mahapurusha Sri Achyutananda Das, the one, which, the one whom started this tradition uh, that I'm speaking as part of today. The um, Chara Atma Karaka in this chart, you will notice, is uh, listed here with the abbreviation AK, whether you're using the East, uh, sorry, the North Indian chart, or whether using the South Indian chart, you will notice one particular uh, planet with the abbreviation AK. It says ME, which is the abbreviation here. I'm just going to make a note here so you can see. ME, Atma Karaka there. In the North Indian chart, you'll see the same ME, Atma Karaka. We are interested in the 12th Defram. The 12th Defram is here. I'm making a nice arrow here. That was for the North Indian, this is for the South Indian. So the 12th from Sagittarius, which housed this Charat Makaraka, is Scorpio. And we are referring to the Navamsha here. I'm not opening the Rashi chart. This is Navamsha. And uh, you will notice herein that the, um, uh, in Scorpio, we have two planets, Rahu and Moon. Mm -hmm. So, we, uh, we need to examine these to, the, to show that this is where we are going to find the Jivan Muktamsha and the Ishta Devata. The sign Scorpio is the Jivan Muktamsha here. That's the term we use. Oh, went too fast. And we can see here Moon and Rahu are there. Now, in Scorpio, Moon and Rahu are quite badly placed, right? Moon is supposed to be debilitated there, we have learned. We have learned that Rahu is also debilitated in Scorpio. This is not a benign placement. It, these are fallen planets. Debilitation refers to fallen. Nietzsche means fallen. Mm -hmm. And we need to pick them up. Now, to solidify this understanding that the Ishta Devata has this importance, the mother of Achuta, of Achuta Nanda, he was named Achuta. His name, her name was Padmavati. Okay? And before her son Achutananda was born, she had a dream. And in this dream, it was asked that the child she would obtain was to be named Achuta. Now, let us try and understand this name. Achuta means the one who is picking you up. Chuta, the word Chuta without the R, refers to some, something that has been fallen, something that has been debilitated, something which has been degraded. And Achuta is the one who picks up the fallen one. Vishnu is generally known to be Patita Pavana. That means the one who picks up the fallen ones. And therefore, the specific name to refer to that which has to be picked up, the fallen which has to be picked up, that name is Achuta. Mm -hmm. So, appropriately, Achuta Nanda's mother had a dream wherein which his name had to be suiting his Ishta Devata because the planets which are indicating his Ishta Devata are debilitated, they are fallen. Therefore, the best name for him should be a name which picks up the fallen one. Now, the moon and Rahu are both there. So it could be any name which picks up the fallen one. Why wasn't he named Patita Pawan? All right, it could be any name. They could, there are also various names of different forms of God which refer to being from picking up the fallen ones. Although obviously Rahu is there, and we can see that when we study the, the Shastras, that Rahu refers to possibly a form of Durga, and the for appropriate form that, that enables people to stop going on a wrong path or a fallen path is Durgati Nashinye, the name Durga. So he could have been named Durg, which you could consider the male name of Durga. Now, with omitting the A, of course, but, but, why was he named Achuta? When we compare these two planets, Rahu and Moon, we notice that Moon has a slight edge over Rahu. And this is because Moon lords the sign of Taurus, and some people consider Ketu the lord of Scorpio. So as a result, Ketu being in Taurus in this chart, if you notice over here, Ketu in Taurus, is actually exchanging with the Moon. Uh, moons, Multricona's Taurus, and planets love the Multricona signs, right? 
So Moon and Ketu effectively have exchanged signs, giving Moon a slight edge over Rahu. It's as if Moon is trying to get back to the sign of Taurus. Now, as a result of which, the form that should be appropriate is a form which is associated with the Moon. And when we speak of the Moon, it can indicate that it is a form of Krishna. All right? There are various options for the Moon. It could be Krishna. All right? It could be Shiva as Somnath. Mm -hmm. It could be a Devi Rupa, Mahavidya Rupa. It is true, he was a worshipper of the Mahavidya uh, Shri Bhagalamukhi, or specifically the form that he used to worship was the form of Kakatpur Devi, mm -hmm. and uh, who is the form of Bhagalamukhi. So he did perform such worship, indicating that the moon became important here in the sign of Mars. Moon Mars yogas indicate Bhagalamukhi. So he did also perform that. He did not restrict himself to to only the worship of Vishnu or Krishna. So this is how we would start off by understanding the concept of Ishtadevata and its impact on the name. Therefore, if one can, it is appropriate to go through the optional names of Devatas associated with one's 12th from Atma Karaka in Navamsha to ascertain the best name of oneself. Now, you may not have only one name. There could be a select number of names, several names. And how to find that out, I'll be showing in the next slide. Now, on the next slide, I have shown that there are many principles of naming. We have, to highlight here, we have the topic of Shadbala. We have Aka Chakata Payadi Varga. This simply refers to the, the sounds of Sanskrit, but they're divided into groups. Um, Avakahara chakra, or also known as Hoda chakra, uh, this is the most used and most common. And we will basically be, be covering these three topics in this video. The remnant topics you can see is quite excessive. We have Swara chakra. Excessive may not be wrong, right? It's good to be sure about the name. but some people consider, or rather do not even use the remnant options here. I will be showing how to use them and why they become important, for which I hope you will also use them. Swara chakra, like I mentioned, which refers to the vowels, choosing the best vowel sound for the child. Pancha Vasta and Pancha Swara Dasha, which has a lot more to do with choosing a name uh, which is related to the, swa to the good vowels, but also this can be useful because of Dasha, time, to know if a person wants to change the name later on. You can simply not change the name. You have to, if you change the name, certain repercussions will be there and how to ensure that you balance that in the person's life. Then we have Garuda Varga and we have Katapayadi Varga and finally Lagna Beheda. Mm -hmm. So these are the methods that I'll be showing. There are more methods, um, but at least I'll be trying to show these methods. Garuda Varga, However, I will not be showing as it is not so relevant at the time of birth. But nevertheless, I will be showing you what it means and how we do it. So, oh, marker there. Now, next slide. Um, first, I have to show you the common method. Now, now, this common method is related to the principles that I'm, I'm going to be speaking on. But it's important to point out what people nowadays do. What does that mean? What people are doing nowadays implies what you're going to get on the street, what you're going to get in the market. How do you know it's right? How do you know it's enough? In this one slide, I'll show you the common method and I'll show you whether it's appropriate or not. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, the common method is based on the birth star. That means the birth nakshatra or janma nakshatra. Mm -hmm. And what is exactly done in this? The sounds of the moon's nakshatra are chosen. Now that means that there is a chart which is called the sound chart or the Hoda chakra or Avagada chakra. I'll be showing it again later. Now what people commonly do is this. They open the chart of the child. They find out the moon nakshatra. And they tell the, the parent, four sounds associated with that nakshatra and tell them choose one and tell them that's it choose one okay 
So for example, let us say you had the moon in, uh, let's say the, the nakshatra of uh, Kritika. Kritika is spread over two signs, okay? Uh, but it's in the nakshatra Kritika. Then they would tell you, well, you can choose the sound A, E, U, or E. They are those four in Kritika. A, E, U, E. That's it. And uh, you could choose the longer vo uh, forms of them. A, I, or E, or U, or AU. Okay? Those are options also. Um, and because they're the long forms of the same sounds. Similarly, all the other sounds have long forms. Now you can see the, the astrologer has been very specific, telling the person you should choose one of these vowels, but they have to initiate the name. If this had been in, let's say, the sign of uh, Punarasu, the name may have to start with a K sound. Mm -hmm. Or that of uh, uh, Arjo or Punarasu, they both have K sounds associated with them. So if it was in the sign uh, signs of, uh, let's say, Maga, the, uh, the, the sign of Maga, Nakshatra of Maga, then the person will have to choose a name associated with an M sound, Ma. It's not based on the beginning of the name of the Nakshatra, as you can hear from the other examples, but you, you would be asked to simply select a name beginning with that. And that's it. You're sent on your way. All right. Now, what do we understand this to be in the tradition? This only provides a strong body. So the child has been given a name which gives a strong body. It may not give sound health, however. You go, you, your body and health are not the same. Your body may be intact, but that doesn't mean what is inside is fine. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what we call a sharira akshara. Sharira refers to the sheath of the body. It does have an impact on health. Yes, it does. Um, and it may have an impact on food as well. It ensures that by choosing this name of the moon, you're ensured you're getting good food, which ensures in sense that you're growing. So uh, from this perspective, the only thing that has been applied or used to understand what's, uh, what's important for the child is they need food and they need to grow. And that's the end of it. I think people deserve a bit more. Mm -hmm. At least if you're going to choose a name, it should be a name for life, not only for food. All right. We've only spoken just now of that this is the first mantra. And all that mantra is doing is ensuring that you're eating well. Okay. Now, maybe that could cure many issues, but it's not enough for life. When you have good health, then what? Mm -hmm. So, it may not give sound health or happiness. It just ensures that you're eating well and your body is growing. Now, if this is enough, if this is appropriate, then we should have examples of, uh, of, of, uh, our, of our predecessors whom have used this technique to give a, ch a child a name. So we have a case here, Shri Ram. His first name is Ram. Mm -hmm. He was born with moon in either Punarvasu or Pusha Nakshatra. There is a debate. Shastrically, people say Punarvasu. Some people argue it should be Pusha. Okay. Let us see the sounds of them. The sounds are either Ke, Ko, Ha, He, Hu, He, Ho, and Da. All right? Yet, he was named Rama, Ram. The Jyotisha who named him was Brahma Rishi Vashista, the author of the Vashista Samhita and grandfather of Maharishi Parashara, Parashara Muni the author of the Parashara's Hora Shastra. So we assume that he knew how to name children. We assume that he knew of this technique of checking the moon's nakshatra and giving the name. We must assume that because he would have been the author of all shastras thereafter. Mm -hmm. So if that is the case, then why did he give Ram the name Ram? Why would he? Okay, let's try another example. Shri Krishna. His first name is Krishna. Mm -hmm. He was born with moon in Rohini Nakshatra. This is accepted by everybody. The sounds of the Nakshatra Rohini are O, V, V, and Vu. Yet the Jyotisha who named him was Garga Muni. So Garga named him. He is also a Rishi. Some people say the Garga is a she. Either way, we're, we're referring to a Rishi or, uh, or a, uh, whom we would call uh, somebody who can speak to God. So therefore, why would he be named Krishna if the best name for him was supposed to be based on his nakshatra? 
all right, let us argue that these are forms of God. So therefore, the normal name uh, methods, naming methods, do not apply to them. That we can accept, fair enough. We have a very recent example of those who had uh, used the knowledge of Jyotishas to, uh, to actually find a suitable name. Jawaharlal Nehru's name. Jawaharlal Nehru is whom is considered the father of modern day India by some. Mm -hmm. he, he was the uh, prime minister after independence of India. Now his name was chosen by the Raj Jyotisha of Khetri. All right. So they had a Raj Jyotisha. He was very well respected. And um, uh, Jawaharlal's father had, uh, uh, had some favor owed to him because of his work for the Raj Jyotisha of Khetri. Mm -hmm. Now, Nehru's, ne Nehru's moon is an Ashlesha nakshatra. There are four sounds there, just like with any, any nakshatra. D, do, de, and do. All right? D, do, de, and do. Some people say, de, ru, de, and do. All right? Depending where you are in India. Now, the sound ja was chosen for him to initiate his name. But this sound ja is all the way in the opposite si sign from Cancer. It's opposite. It's in Capricorn. His name is, his moon, I'm sorry, is in Ashlesha in Cancer. But the name was selected from Capricorn. What went wrong? If he is being get, getting, an, if he's getting a name from a very well esteemed Jyotisha, somebody who really understands astrology, then why would he get a name not associated with his moon sign? Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Not even the moon sign. Moon nakshatra is not even chosen. Okay, the name is in a far distant place, far away from his moon nakshatra. Opposite sign, in fact, it doesn't get further away. So it's, it's likely that the method which, or rather the common method, which is used to find the name of the person based on the moon's nakshatra is only for common people. Because all these that I have mentioned so far, that this technique was not used. This is where we need to start accepting that if our predecessors didn't, um, let's say, um, ascribe to this method, or rather didn't settle with this method, then we should not either. Mm -hmm. We all want our children to have success, to have growth. If they want to be politicians, let them be, let them be successful politicians. If we want them to be writers, let them be successful writers. Or if we want them to be astrologers or, or, or engineers or whichever future we want for them, we want the best for them. So why are we not choose, using a method to name the children, which is giving them the best and not only a strong body and good food? All right. So with this, it is appropriate for us to begin learning the better methods of naming children or naming ourselves for that matter. The strength of a name. The best name is one which enhances the strengths of the person. So therefore, we should choose names based on the strongest indications in the chart, whatever is strongest, of which we have planets to choose from. So the strongest planet in the chart is the one we should select the name from. Mm -hmm. This blessing of strength comes from Shiva. And his blessing is seen in the Shadbala. The Shadbala shows the inherent strengths of the native's planets. And the name from that strongest planet will be the best for the individual. Mm -hmm. Will be the one which gives the person most strength. I see I made a slight addition of words which should be corrected. But that's for later. Now, Shadbala is the first criteria that we teach in our tradition. I must tell, however. This method is not used for the avatar. So this method I'm going to speak of is for everybody but the avatar. See, we need strength because we need to be picked up. We need to be picked up in life. So we, our strongest planets need to be enhanced. Mm -hmm. The avatar is the strongest. So the weakest planet for them is the method that we, uh, will be used because they need to pick up others. All right? So. For the method for us and the method for the avatar is different. For example, uh, for in the case of Sri Krishna, the sound ka comes from the sign of Gemini or Cancer. All right, 
And in his chart, Sri Krishna's chart, Mars is in Cancer debilitated. Therefore, it may be inferred that maybe he was given that name. Even, the, even Mars itself has the name Ka associated with it. Sri Ram, his, uh, this, the sound Ra comes from the sign of Libra and from the planet the moon or luminary the moon. Now, in Libra, he has actually his weakest planet. He has Saturn exalted but retrograde. Therefore, it'll act as debilitated. So the name Ram actually takes him out, uh, takes people out of Saturn problems. The name Krishna takes people out of Mars problems. Right? So the methodology that we use for the avatars and ourselves is different. But whatever Nero was given, we should try to use the same principle. Now, for, for us human beings, regular beings, souls who are trapped on this earth so far, the Shabbala gives us the most strength and the name based on that is the best. Now you've heard two techniques, the Ishta Devata and Shabbala. Now, can there be a, what we call an issue in choosing a name from both? It doesn't have to be. If you choose a name based on Shadbala, what you're getting is the first syllable. That means after having found the first syllable, you, you should choose a form of the Ishta Devata whose name begins with this first syllable. If you find in your chart that a planet, let's say Mars is the strongest, which has the sounds Ka and Ga, and you find that your Ishta Devata is Shiva, then it may be appropriate for you to you choose a name of Shiva like Kashi, Kashi Vishwanath, mm -hmm. or Kedarnath, all right? Uh, or Gauri Shankar. So you, you, you're only getting the sound from this method of Shalbala, but the form of the Ishta Devata is still seen in the Navamsha, and we will try to match these two together. There are so many names of each of the Devatas. So we, at least with the Shalbala method, we get to know the first sound of the same that will be used for our name. All right? Now, here's how to, how to use this information. The strongest name is from the strongest planet. Mm -hmm. Here are the steps on the left side. The strongest planet, as per Shadbala, will provide the person with the most blessings and support. Literally, this is where your biggest abilities are. The planet with most Shadbala, this is the entire Shadbala collective, it, that planet gives you most strength. It is basically your muscle. Which muscles do you have to flex? The biggest muscles are the ones we want to flex the most. The, the ones with least muscle will give you least opportunity, least ability. In other words, your Shadbala is indicating your strength, your personal strength. So choose a name which is enhancing your personal strengths. All right? Once we find the strongest planet, we ascertain the optional sounds from that strongest planet. Mm -hmm. I will show this on the slide after this. These letters or akshara will initiate the name, or preferably they should. We hope they did, right? Each of the seven grahas preside over a portion of the 49 Sanskrit letters. And like I said, this method is not performed from the Vishnu avatars. Now, what happens when you have, let's say, multiple options? Well, you probably won't only will have one, but that doesn't mean it's your only option. In, in this graph that I am showing here um, and highlighting here, uh, you will notice that moon, oh, I shouldn't do that. The moon has 168%. Percent is, this is a percentage of its strength, all right? And that's quite high, that's very lovely. Venus has 165%, also very lovely, very high. Most likely, we should choose the name based on one of these two factors in the chart. One of these two would be most appropriate. Mm -hmm. So that's how we would go about it for, let's say, this individual who has this graph. This is not mine. <laughs> this is actually Nero, Jawaharlal Nero's chart. So in his chart, we would be selecting the first syllable of the name, the first sound, based on Venus or Jupiter. Now, you don't have to select only the strongest. It may be that it's a better option to pick the one which is not as strong as the strongest, depending on the chart. For example, whenever you choose names of malefic planets, let's say Mars and Saturn, or even the Sun, you have to be attentive of that it's not going to cause a lot of suffering in the person's life. Because whatever you enhance, that's going to be in their life. If you enhance Mars, there is a possibility the person will enter into many arguments. If you enhance Saturn, it is, there's a possibility the person will have to do lots and lots of hard labor. 
you have to weigh that in the chart. How good is that chart? Mm -hmm. So this is where we start. So assume in this chart that we have decided that Moon and Venus are the strongest. So now it would be, it would be appropriate for us to select which one and also which sounds come from them. In the next slide, you can see this uh, shown clearly. I've shown that the strongest are Venus and Moon in this chart. They have very high percentages of Shadbala. And then I have shown what is called the Akka Chatata Payadi Varga. Why is, why is this the name of this Varga? Because if you notice this column here, it starts with A, then K, then Ch, then T, then T, then P, then Y, Adi, Varga. So the, this is the division of the sounds in Sanskrit, and we allot planets to that. Sun rules all the vowel sounds. Mars rules all the K sounds. K, K, G, G, N. These are actually guttural sounds. You need your throat to say them. Okay? Venus rules all the Chavarga. Cha, Cha, Ja, Ja, Nya. Mm -hmm. They're palatal. Those who know that. Mercury indicates the alveolar sounds. Ta, Ta, Da, Da, Na. Okay? Um, these also, these ta sounds also refer to very hard sounds like T, T. That's a hard sound, hard T. These hard sounds are used more in uh, Saxon-based languages. Uh, for example, English will use more of these sounds, mm -hmm. uh, with some exception. And whereas uh, more of the, as far as Europe is concerned, the Slavic languages will use more of the Jupiterian sounds, which are more dental. Ta, ta, da, da, na. They are more soft. Mm -hmm. They are more common in the uh, Slavic languages and uh, Latin languages as well. Uh, of course, Sanskrit has all of them. Saturn sounds are the labials, pa, pa, ba, ba, ma. And moon sounds are the semivowels. That means sounds which are based on vowels, like i and na become i ya. All right? Now in Sanskrit, r is there. So r and a become ra. So it becomes a semivowel. R is a, is a vowel, but R is a semivowel. So I've not included it here because we don't really see names starting with R. All right. Now there's a L, which is a semivowel. V, that's U and R together. Wa or V. And then the S sound and H. Now these are the divisions of the planets and sounds. And in, in the chart we had found, we had decided that moon was the strongest along with Venus. So that means we have to find that either the sounds of Venus, cha cha ja ja nya, all right, the, the palatals, and the semivowels, yara lava, shir shir sa ha. These are the uh, semivowels. These are the two groups that we would choose for Nero because this is a shadbala. These are the two groups. One of them we're going to select finally, but these are the two. So in this, I have shown two techniques already. One, which is the Shadbala, and the second, which is the Akachatata Payadi Varga. In this, we have found some planets and their sounds. We're not done yet, because we have still not selected the name, really. So let's see how that's done. Now, because we have a choice between two planets, Moon and Venus, we have to select the stronger, finally. Mm -hmm. And now, this is up to the astrologer to figure out. The astrologer has found that the strongest in Shadbala are Moon and Venus. And we see that Moon is in the Ascendant, which is brilliant. And Venus is in the fourth house in Digbala, which is also very brilliant. Venus is in a Mahapurush Yoga, absolutely wonderful. And it's also joined a planet Mercury. It's likely this is stronger than Moon. Venus is an own sign, Moon is an own sign. But Venus is in Digbala. All right. Also, Venus is joined a planet, giving it more weight, as if there's two against one. So Venus, if we had to choose between Moon and Venus, it would be better to choose Venus in this case. All right. Maybe there were other considerations of the Raj Jyotish of Kepli. He may have noted, this is some Kala Sarpa Kalamrita Yoga, which is in the chart. So he must have had some idea behind choosing Venus over Moon also in that. Maybe he had take, take, taken that into account. Good astrologers will look at everything. Mm -hmm. Maybe he had seen that Moon was under a lot of Papakartri Yoga, severe one by Rahu and Saturn. So this would have been a tough thing for him to deal with. 
So Venus may have been more easy for him. Mm -hmm. It's easy for Venus to deal with the fiery planets Mars and Sun on each side of him. Whereas Moon, it's difficult to deal with any matrix. So likely, and we do know, he did choose Venus because he ch chose the sound J. I'm not sure what he told Nero's parents, but he did choose Venus's sounds and asked them to select one. Now, so that was the likely methodology of the Rajyotish of Ketri, whom had selected the name for Nero. And notice we have not even talked about the moon's nakshatra yet. Not even. That becomes relevant now. Fitting the moon. The moon is also is not exempt from our understanding of the chart. And uh, what we will be doing is we will be including the common method in our understanding. So what have we done so far? We have found the strongest planet, and now we're going to match this with the nakshatra. We have not ignored them. There is a reason why they're important. But we are going to draw a bit more understanding using the sounds we got from Venus and moon in the chart and its shad and the shadbala into this understanding of the moon. See, the beginning sound or akshara, syllable, decides the strength of the native as well as the body. It is the sharira akshara. And we know we have selected a good sound because we chose the strongest planet, the one with most muscle, shadbala. It has to protect the body from harm and ensure good health, as well as shape the future of the native in terms of karma and fruits of karma, because the food you eat is also fruits of life. Mm -hmm. In other words, it decides the karma phala and should be decided based on the best placed planet in the chart. Maybe karma phala is not the appropriate word in this case. The idea is it's the food you eat because the nakshatras decide the food you eat. So you, we cannot ignore the nakshatras in choosing a name. We have to combine the nakshatra method with the shadbala method, in other words. And we do so using this chart. If your screen is a bit small, or your video screen is a bit small, it's time to make it bigger. Trust that all these sounds have also been reproduced on my website, srigaruda.com, all right? And uh, here in which you will see four groups of sounds and uh, they're based on the nakshatras. Mm -hmm. um, all of them are given here based on what we call avakahada or hoda chakra. Avakahada and hoda are the same thing. It's different ways of calling the same thing. It's the same chart the same sounds, don't worry about it. Uh, there are variations of this for different purposes, but this, uh, this what I've shown here is the appropriate method. Now, I, I will not name all the sounds here. They, they're all uh, quite well represented here. Um, and there is an article on my website, srigaruda.com, on the topic of Hoda Chakra. You can Google Srigaruda Hoda Chakra, and you will find a direct link on Google straight to the article. Now, what we want is to match the previous method with this. Remember we got all the sounds of the moon and all the sounds of Venus to choose from? So in the next slide, you'll see I've marked them. All right? I've marked all the sounds which are there. And you will see I marked in Ardra, there was Cha. Ardra is in Gemini, right? So that's important. Now, we have all the Ja sounds in Uttarashara and Abhijit which basically is Capricorn. Then we have the Jha, Nya, then Cha sounds, all of them uh, among, uh, along the signs of Pisces and Aries. And what we do is having marked all of them, we then have to see which is best from the moon. Notice that the strongest sounds, none of them are in Cancer with the moon in Ashlesha with, with, uh, with Nero's moon. They're not there. So that is why those sounds were not selected for him. That, that, that's why the sounds of Ashlesh and Nakshatra were not selected for him, because his strongest sounds were elsewhere. Okay, but we still have to fit this with the moon. So watch now. The sounds of Venus, we had selected Venus, yes? Moon we had excluded, the semivowels, because we saw Venus was stronger in his birth chart. So only Venus, these are the sounds of only Venus. Mm -hmm. I said moon earlier, it is only Venus. Now, these nakshatras that we have selected, which have these sounds, reside in the signs, note, in the signs of Gemini, Capricorn, Pisces, and Aries. Gemini, Capricorn, Pisces, and Aries. Mm -hmm. That's where they are. Now, before mentioning the rest of what's written here, 
Let's see the next slide. Let's see, they are Gemini, Capricorn, Pisces, Aries. That's where the sounds are for him. Now, which of these sounds are best placed? Gemini is 12th house from his moon sign. So now we're using the moon sign. Now we're using it. We know the sounds, which one of the sounds of his name is in Gemini, mm -hmm. of the Venus sounds, I'm sorry. So we would not select the Venus, uh, that sound of Venus, of, which is in Gemini, that's Ch. We will not select Ch. That won't work for him. Now there's some in Capricorn, seventh from his moon. This is quite, Kendra's are very good. Quadrants are very good. So that would be appropriate. All right. Which are those sounds? That's all the J sounds. All right. Ja, Ju, J, Jo, etc. There's also some sign, it sounds in Pisces, which are the Ch sounds along with theirs. Ch is in, the Ch sounds are in Aries and Pisces for him. Now Aries and Capricorn are quadrants to the moon. We prefer them. Trine is still good. But Kendra or quadrants from the moon sign are best. Why? Because they ensure that the person's body is strong. If you choose sounds which are in quadrants from the moon, they don't have to be joined the moon. They just have to be in quadrants. It ensures a strong body. Mm -hmm. And in this case, what was chosen is J in Capricorn. All right. So the methodology that was used in the case of Nero was to find, number one, the strongest planets based on Shadbala. Mm -hmm. Number two, to find where these sounds are in the nakshatras. And hence, we, when we found Venus being the strongest planet, his sounds, cha cha ja ja nya, were looked at in the nakshatras. In the previous slide, I marked that. And then we saw with the signs that these nakshatras occupy from his natal moon and said, all right, those which are in quadrants are best. Mm -hmm. Dushtanas, forget it. Bad health will come. And of these, for some reason, Ja was chosen. All right? And with that, we conclude the first video on finding the name of, of a person using the techniques of Shadbala, the Hoda Chakra, the Akka Chapter Tapayadi Varga, and also understand the, the importance of the Ishtadevata in this. I look forward to presenting you a second video in the near future. And I hope you enjoyed this one. If you do, make sure you like it.